What is going on my good people? This is your main man Ben here and we are Talk Active, practicing wisdom, justice, courage, and moderation. What's happening, good people, man? This is your main boy. Happy Friday, folks. It is amazing since, you know, end of the week. It's the best time of the week. It's my favorite day, actually, of the week. I don't know about you, but it's Friday. It's always amazing. Anyway, guys, I hope people in Florida are safe. You know, I've seen all this crazy uh, storm stuff. Um, the most craziest one is that 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 two million Bugatti that was pulled out in the driveway and got destroyed. So there's only 300 plus made in the world, but it's a goner now, goner now. But <laughs> other than that, guys, before we start, I would just like to thank some of our supporters in this channel, man. Truly appreciate the donations, coffee stuff, you know, little things push us to be better it's always amazing that being said i would also like to thank our new subscribers you know we got a main channel for subscribers some are paid some are sponsored some are paid uh by our own self you know just you know reviewing things and all that almost that limit limit for for monetization but other than that appreciate for new subscribers man thank you guys so much thank you guys so much and by the way if you have missed episode 95 last week, we don't have any, um, you know, uh, uh, guests, but we have went back to our roots. We talk about how to deal with haters. If you are popular and all that stuff, if you're not even so personal life, you can pick up some knowledge in there, how to deal with haters and ways to not waste your time with them. But other than that, check it out. I got some good feedback in our downloads on spotify apple Podcasts, check us out we're available in google Podcasts as well but other than that guys we are in the month of september theme of the month is resiliency and fortitude end of the month resiliency is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties while fortitude is the courage in pain or adversity since we practice practicality to be able to live well we will apply the one that will work in our method. That being said, I'm so pumped up right now because I got my black coffee right here. It's amazing, you know. Don't buy Colombian black coffee. I'm not a hater, but I think it's a hype. I, I, I truly think it's a hype. But other than that, guys, I'd like to present episode 96. Episode 96, we will take you to Canada. During my brother and Amma's wedding, I met this young man, man, with a very not so young experience in life. Like many of us, Michael migrated to Canada so that he will be able to provide for his family, especially for his son. His journey towards a good life, a promise of dream come true, and overcoming the unforeseen situations in life makes a perfect example of courage and moderation. Give it up for Michael. What's up, brother? Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me and talk actor. Hey, yeah. bro. Uh, I mean, I mentioned like uh, it was it was just like a normal conversation in the wedding, right? It's, I know, man. I mean, and, how are you, uh, sir? How are you? You just I know you just got out of work. How, how's everything? I just got out of work. Uh, it was a bit crazy because, like, for my case, I've been working in a long-term care, especially with the pandemic. We had like an outbreak. Not long ago, we just got off of it because, uh, well, it's hard to contain COVID, right? Right, uh, right. It is what it is, especially the wearing the mask and everything. So. And how's well, how's the new uh, uh, city life that you uh, uh you know <laughs> different city that you just transitioned? Uh, it's nice. It's nice, honestly. Uh, because the difference I can compare. It was a smaller city than right. coming to like a bigger one. It's like same from coming from. I'm from Tacloban, then going to Davao. So or I know, man. So the transition is uh, there's a lot of things you can do, which is really nice. And I, in comparison to the previous place, I prefer the bigger city because uh, there's a lot of things to do. Like you never get bored, honestly. Like especially for my case, I'm always active and then wants to do and explore stuff. And being in a big city gives you the opportunity for that one. 
Damn, bro. I mean, it sounds like you just adopted there. Like, you know, you just like blend in easy. <laughs> but but yeah. Yeah. so far, how's the local uh, coffee there? <laughs> local co coffee? Like, I still prefer our own kind of coffee. I know, man. Man. Black one, man. man, like, I would look for it. Like, I don't, I'm not a hater also with the Canadian brand or whatsoever. But like, instant black coffee, really cheap and really good. It yeah. gives me the kick every single time. Yeah. Have you ever like uh, uh like definitely our our local brands are amazing, but uh, how would you compare the local Canadian black coffee? Because I have not. If I have known you prior to my brother's wedding, I would definitely will ask you, yo, bring me a local <laughs> Canadian coffee, man. I would. I would honestly. Uh, hmm. Isn't that bad? I tried. I I tried when I came. Like uh, it's not as strong as I expected to be. Like, I know there are stronger ones, but like, for me, I use black coffee as my pre-workout. Right, right. So I'm, I'm like, kind of looking for that kick every single time. But but our own brand, like the Nescafe one, it's simple, right, right. but like, it still gives, like, it gives me the energy I need. So like, what you're saying is the Canadian coffee sucks. <laughs> I'm just we'll, we'll give it like a 2080. Oh man. Like I mean when we went to Mexico, bro, and um um first thing cuz it's like unlimited food, right? Cuz it's a resort. I I ask the oldest lady there cuz you know, she's in the cafeteria or like in in a restaurant cuz there's like seven different restaurants and ask her cuz I know they respect her. Can I get a uh, señora? Can I get a uh, black coffee local? Yo. She brought me that black coffee, man. I wasn't like active like the entire day. It's amazing. Yeah, Mexico. Oh, yeah. Probably I, because I, I'm, I'm a good five. Have you ever there? Have you ever been in Mexico? No, no. That, that probably next year. Right? Yo, All these brands, like, Mexico. Especially seeing my sister and then. I know, I know. But what? Well, well, they went on like on a different path though. Um, I went three or four times in Cancun. I, I think it's your young yeah, professional. Yeah. That's where the yuppies go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. I know, I know. <laughs> Yo, I got slapped there Yeah. by my wife. For sure. <laughs> yeah. You want to hear that story, bro? Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah, sure, we, <laughs> we were in a van, right? And there's a strip in Cancun because it's young professionals. There's college, especially for like, what do you call this? Spring break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In their clubs. In the sidewalk, there'll be like big bird cage, you know, those bird cage. Bird cage? Yeah, and there's muchachas inside. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> Yo, oh, there are my. girls inside. And I was like, Yo. looking in this side and looking at that side, she just like slapped me. It's like, where am I supposed to look? Both sides got something. <laughs> It was inside a van, bro. I mean, man, this guy right That's here, not you know. Intentional, but like, yeah. I know, bro. <laughs> yeah, but. I'm just, I'm just you're, saying you're though. Selling, you're selling Mexico to me, man. Like, you're really selling. Like, <laughs> you gotta year, check it out. My goal. You gotta yeah, check it sure. out. I mean, yeah. when I saw their uh, videos and I was like, they went to Cabo, man. That that looks good too. But I was like, the Sea of Cortez is one of the most dangerous sea in the world because it has the most biggest great white shark inhabited in the planet. So I was like, no go for me. No way. No <laughs> uh, way. But as long as I'm 100% safe, I'm down, man. Like, yeah, honestly, man. Hey, you'll be like, safe. In, <laughs> you'll be safe and sound down there, with, especially with the with the young ladies in, in Cancun, bro. Oh, mm, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, but we we're going to dig though. deeper with this guy, you know. But other than <laughs> that, bro, episode 96, I invited this guy because when we went to the wedding, <clears throat> We just had a lot of similarities, and I was just like, I'm ready to bust out my coffee, and we can talk here all day, but it's somebody else's wedding. You know, it's it's a pre <laughs> it's a gathering for, for the family, but I was like, that was some good talk that we had there, bro. But other than that, Mike, um, how would you define the meaning of the sentence, the vulnerability of dependence? In your own perspective, bro, I mean, not putting in the spot, you know, but, you know, in just know, own definition. Uh, the way I see it is like being in the same concept of be uh, in your comfort zone because uh, mm. you're in your comfort zone you're very vulnerable in a way like uh, there's really no room for growth and then mm. so if you're stuck into one uh, scenario like for I'll give an example like if I stayed in the Philippines right 
Like I, it, it's basically our comfort zone. I'm very vulnerable to temptations, and I was depending with my family. Like you, you experience it. Like man, like your your parents right. like abroad and everything, and then you they, they just send money every single time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You don't really value. You don't really see the yeah, value. That's what you call the rich boys. Once you start. Rich kids. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying rich, but like. Uh, in our in like, our planet, in our city, they're gonna be rich, <laughs> right? You, you you have money to go party yeah. school whatsoever and then you don't have responsibility you just focus on your school and then that is like uh being vulnerable because like, you would not grow out of it because you're gonna be like oh my life is good people are sending money but the, in the other aspect of that one right. your parents people who were working hard they were trying to do the best for you but like as uh, as some of my experience as some of my friends uh like uh not some of them are not friends but like uh uh common like someone you know right, right. uh they they would take advantage right they, right like, i they mean they would never want to they don't never want to grow they don't want to be going like trying to better themselves and i find it like it's it's limiting and then to think like you have all the potential of right. being great. Right. Like, it's definitely... For my case, I would never see, like on me, like I never saw myself coming to Canada, like imagining what I was before. Because it's like self-growth. Right. Like the growth of the, it's really nice. Like you realize like a lot of people are looking up to you, which you don't even know. And then yeah. it goes to where your actions speak louder than your words, right? That's so, the thing with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm glad to hear all this, especially in your generation, because definitely between you and me, there's like one generation gap. And looking at it, you know, in my because my youngest brother is is with like a, a same age as my youngest brother John. They got this sense of like party, party all the time when they were there. But right now, hearing this, it's a different tone. There's a different type of direction that they that they speak of. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, they kind of preaching and then they kind of like paving their own path. So that, that's some good stuff, man. I'm, I'm a truly, uh, it's really a blessing to hear stuff like that, especially in your generation. Truly appreciate that, uh, uh definition that yeah. you got there, bro. But being Michael right now, you know, mm -hmm. and I know you're first and foremost, I know we got some, cause I know for a fact, I saw the demographics of my listeners. And ladies, this question is for you. Is Michael single? Is Michael single? Yeah, I'm single. Oh, like, yeah, ladies, uh, I'm just asking that for your own benefit, okay? It's it's a plain question. Don't get too excited. Now, a single Michael right now on Canada, what does your morning routine look like? My morning routine Wait, usually <laughs> starts off. Yeah, usually starts off, man, like, I really fix my bed. Like, once I wake up, like, I I saw some, I, before I went out in my downtime, like, right. I was looking up on stuff to be productive, but, like, that gives me the cue. Like, I saw that video, and then it showed me, like, you have to win every morning. Yeah. So you start with small stuff, like fixing your bed, getting organized. So basically, you're starting off your day. Uh, it's productive, and it's it's a chain reaction to right. everything. Like for me, I start my day, fix my bed, do my meal prep. If I'm working, I usually like, I have a seven to three job. So I wake up like 5 a.m. I put my food in the air fryer, fix it up. So meal uh, prep, being bed. meal prep, you make your own food, right? Yes, sir. But Ladies. air frying. <laughs> I, hey, air frying I'm, is I'm good. Like, it's healthy. No yeah. oil. It's easy. It's easy. Like, uh, I weigh my foods usually like, and then I put them in containers every single time, every day, every day I work or off, off work. How long has this been going on though? Man, like, uh, almost like a few years now. Oh, really? Uh, it, it feels good. Honestly. I mean, how are you basic? You're controlling your intake basically, and you're controlling your diet. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, uh, how often do you eat some, you know, fast foods, you know, bro, like, uh, the thing for working out and meal prepping, it's not like you're competing. So it gives you like the freedom. Like for my case, I eat like three days straight. If I'm craving something, I'm not depriving myself. Of right, something. right, right. Like, we have one life. 
some people take it to the extremes like oh i need to eat strict because i want this body but like that body yeah. like you're aiming for is temporary exactly once you eat something you know every every people who work out one cheap day fucks you up but like still you're right, enjoying right. the process you're working out release stress and whatsoever because it has a lot of benefits it's not like just you looking good right right it's for it's for your own mental state and then you feel good you feel productive and more confident in yourself too so. with with your type of discipline and the way you take care of your self you know uh your body your your self being um just in case if you are in a date where are you going to take where are you going to take your first date like a dinner because you know yeah. uh no uh, i would honestly prefer if they would i would ask them if uh where do you want because uh for me i don't mind what what kind of date like as long as we have fun we get to know yeah, each other yeah. and then like uh but more more things like I prefer walks and parks and what's and bro like in in good spots so I'll take like them every, every I'll take them yeah, Chipotle yeah. bro I mean you know <laughs> you got Chipotle in Canada yeah yeah bro I mean. yeah but like man like uh I, I don't really mind as long as uh, for me is like both of us are having a, a good time well I mostly like to a good conversation right right not, like going through like crowded places with a lot of noise where yeah, you can man. shout and then you got, you need to get to know the person right so and then there's no point of view like going to somewhere there's a lot of distractions too now no you've been in, there in canada you know no man is an island no man is an island and have you ever no went out there man date with like a uh, canadians or whatever uh yeah i was dating some of them before so but like uh the thing is uh it was kind of hard like you know you're not staying in one place Yeah. And then like I I was all like the thing I learned for Canadians or other races is just being honest and then letting them know like oh I'm this is what I want. Right. And then if if it fits on your own lifestyle and them and then they would agree. Uh there's a there's a spark or there's a chance but like right. sometimes like they have their own responsibilities too. So and then you limit yourself like oh this is where we're going and then i'm telling you right now right, right. i have i have a family my family needs me like uh before i had like i was dating someone in newfoundland labrador but like she was really nice and everything but i told her beforehand like i am moving out and then sometimes mm. long distance for me is not going to work out because it's really hard like i've been in long distance relationships it, it sounds and... like you're breaking canadian girl's heart bro <laughs> no man, like <laughs> I, it's like telling them honestly so that they would not expect me because sometimes like we tend to say things right. just for the sole purpose of other people like getting them into bed right. or getting yeah, yeah, getting yeah, yeah. them into what they want but like if you're honest you're you're not breaking their heart because they are preparing themselves. Right, right. It sounds yeah, like the they, book that I'm narrating right now. I'm in the middle of a project <laughs> and it's like an yeah, alpha yeah, male yeah. book. And this is exactly yeah, yeah. a perfect example. <laughs> Guys, I don't know about you, but you don't want to miss this episode. I'm going to announce somewhere in, in the future this book that I'm doing right now. But Michael, what's your favorite childhood memory that's like standing out? all in one well, like i'm not sure if you're gonna agree with me but like that childhood memory is like when everything was just simple like those small oh, yeah. games that we used to play oh yeah like uh those like because i'm from tacoba and we had like it's called tumbalata oh yeah so we have this slippers man like this Yo, slipper, i'm the pro i'm like the don't best start with me like, i got like a scar in here mike You know hey, what happened? Man. My my cousin hit a tumbalata in that can. I, I see that one. <laughs> you know, flew in front of my face and hit my forehead and created some kind of like a a, a scar. So I know what you're talking about. It is mad oh, fun. Like It's that, mad fun. That was like one of the best things. Like every single day you're excited to wake yeah. up just to see your friends. My, I, my family would always like look for me in our subdivision. So they would not know where I am. And then one time my my dad and uh -huh. my mom like basically hid our bikes. 
because I'm like biking in yeah. the highways and everything. Like I don't care. Like you feel invincible that time. Yeah. And you just want to go for an young and reckless. And, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then like stray dogs. Yeah. <laughs> like I like I'm afraid of dogs, man. But like. And like that's like a highlight. If you see a dog, I'm like yeah, trying to chase me. You better. Your bike and yeah, you yeah. better. You but, better run. But like, I cherish those moments, man. Like, cause like this generation, I see like everyone is in their tablets, iPads, and whatever. Exactly, man. And then they're missing out, like. Yeah. S- simple stuff, sweating out, being in the sun. You appreciate every single time. It's you way make different. friends for life. Yeah. Yeah. It- definitely you, you definitely young, like your childhood friends like you share the same moments especially when i go home i go back to Tacloban. like man we could not stop talking it's different now the these days you, right you you yeah. Oh, yeah like now it's like you feel sorry for them for not being able to experience those type of stuff yeah definitely that's a truth right there and uh i always preach to my daughter because she's the the one that's got more better understanding and i always <laughs> tell her because this generation even though we don't allow her to have Facebook, um, Instagram, and so, because I really don't see a benefit of kids owning that now because it's just a face. It's just like showing off, you know, I'm better than this and all that. So we don't allow our daughter to have that. But I told her and my wife always tells her daughter, you don't have to please anybody and don't seek for their approval. If you don't feel well, you don't have to explain it to them. You know, this is just like, how to protect yourself you know you need to build the immunity because in our days we just go out and talk about it but you know this days is really different i mean that would be the as you the, see yep bro like as you see in the news right like this kids committing suicide younger less than 15 years old Yo. i'm like i'm asking i'm like asking why like it's like life is too nice but like we can't see what's behind the curtain right. what's happening right now to them like yeah. you would only see in the picture like you see oh why did they do that one but like i want to share something bro go ahead go ahead uh, brother. yeah 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 like uh same thing like it happened when it came back from the new york like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i got this i got this uh like i'll tell him i call him a friend he was in the gym with me at the same time right every single time after work He's gonna he's always there he is always there like and then i can tell like he has problems he would always tell me and then his english was not that good okay but the thing that happened is when i got back i never saw him and i'm like oh maybe he transferred gyms and a few, a few weeks come by like oh this guy never misses the gym but like i'm getting like in the back of my head i'm getting curious and then yeah I, my mom told me about the news where this Filipino guy stabbed his uh, wife and kid, bro, like, and then that person works out. And then I'm like, I'm like, I have a feeling like, can you give me the name? And I was looking him up, bro. That was, that was a guy. He stabbed his wife and kid. He, he was always telling me like, for my me as a nurse, I'm like, I could have listened. Like, I feel guilty at the same time because every one of us has our own demons, right? Wait, wait, bro, wait. Us. Time out, bro. Did did he murder the family, bro? Oh God! Yes, bro. It's in the news, man. Like, I'm like, it really bothered me throughout my work. I was going to work. I'm like, if I could have done something, I was guilt tripping. Right, right. Yeah, but like that concept is like he was dealing with something same as the topic we're dealing about like people are very fragile right now because we would not know like in social media a lot of people show what's your best faces. assessment is he is he mentally problem bro like you take a person out of his comfort zone like you take him from the philippines coming here and then i don't know what happened with the family and whatsoever but it, he had tons of things in his mind. He was telling me like he was having problems for work. I could not help him with work. Oh, yeah. I barely yeah. Started it. yeah. Uh, but like I told him like, uh, like I've been in the same boat. I came in as a student. So I was looking, I was trying my best, but like, I can say like, he's trying his best, but that took me off guard. 
like I was like I could not believe it. Like I would say like he was a nice guy. He was helping out every like whoever wants to work out in the gym, but maybe everything just piled up. That's uh that's disturbing. I mean I know man. Like and then what I was I, was he still alive? He's alive. How many kids did he have? Just one man, twenty year old. What? Twenty year old uh girl. Damn, yeah, man. that's tough. That's tough, man. There's a lot. I know. Like, I want to visit him. I don't know, but like, uh, I I talked with one of uh like a gym member right. who was working out with him. I right. told him like the other day, did you know what happened? And he was a teacher. Uh, he felt like he felt like so bad. They uh, wish like same as me because we kind of saw him like uh, he he was dealing with something, but. For me, every single time he went there, he's always telling me it's so hard. Like I, why not I go back home, job. though? Why not I go back home? Him, that's the question. That's the answer, man. Like I'm like t- telling him, if you can't do it, like you can go home. No, it's you're not imprisoned question. here. You have yeah. a freedom. You're a free man. You know what I'm saying? I know, man. I mean, we I know, really man. can't judge if people. You know, that's the thinking. But man, not yeah. taking a you know, at expense of taking your beloved wife and your daughter's, you know, life. You don't own them. You know uh, what I'm saying? I, I really don't know, man. Like, yeah, that was like to the extremes. Like, yeah, it was guilt tripping me for weeks. Like, um, hey, bro, I don't don't put yourself in there. I mean, it's not I know, on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know it's I mean, not me, but like sometimes you can't. In the back of your head, you can right, stop right. You could have done what something. If you listen. What if you listen even more? Yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Right. But you know what? You know what? Just I know it's just yeah. stressing, man. Now I'm just saying, man. I mean, I know you got like you're an emotional guy, and I'm. I don't want you to put yourself in it because you know you're a good person. And no, nah, it's it's not on you. It's not on you. It's there. By the end of the day, I'll be judged differently by God. My wife is gonna be judged differently by God. We all gonna be responsible on our own, you know. But that's that's not on you. But other than that, though, Michael. So far, what's your biggest failure and what did you learn from that experience? Uh, my biggest failure? Right now so far, I mean, you're that. young. I mean, you know, but as as for, you know, overall, like what you have learned that you can, you know, tell your son one day, <laughs> this was my biggest failure that changed everything. Mm. Uh, the thing that I can see right now is like... Uh, failing in some of the exams I've been taking because it could have led me to a better place. But like, I'm not, I, I'm like believing in God has a plan and timing. Right, 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 definitely. So just recently I've been taking my NCLEX. So I just failed it, which is, I know, like if, I know I can pass it, but the right, thing right. is I was too distracted. And then uh, I was basically taking taking it for granted yeah yeah and then like i would tell my kid like if you really want something and it it's gonna help you out you need to focus you need to give everything you got right sacrifice every single time and then yeah, either you fail i don't see it like it's uh like a big mistake on my part because i know i did my part like yeah. not a hundred percent right right but like i was i was like trying to i'm like doing it but like i know it's not enough yeah because some people really work hard for it and then i'm not going to compare myself to other people right, right? Right, definitely. they have their own way of learning and yeah. i have my own way too but like the thing for me is, is i have like really poor study habit so Shh. it's a downfall the and fact like, that you're here by you, you did it yourself <laughs> don't talk to me like that because if you got bad habits uh, <laughs> mine's probably is f- f- i can't say it but f- Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> I know, man. I know, man. Like, uh, not everyone's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as long as it's how we pick it up, like yeah. how we keep on trying to better ourselves. Like, there's a lot of sayings like, you fall down eight, you stand up nine, or something right, like right, that right. one. But like, it, it goes to show you're resilient. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're aiming for your goal. Like, uh, as a as being in Canada or in abroad, right, you right. Don't let it. You don't. You don't get it to you you don't settle for one thing and then you 
you label yourself like, oh, my limit is just until here. Right. Because we have all our potentials every single day. Like for me, I see younger kids. I'm like, dude, why, why are you settling for this kind of job? Like, I'm not degrading you, but like you have the opportunity right, right now. Right. Definitely. Like, you can grab like you're in Canada or you're like our, our experience in the Philippines are crazy. Yeah, we are. Like We are, we are limited to whatever we can achieve like we are labeled as either you're gonna be a nurse a doctor engineer teacher or we teach it's like yeah. limited here yeah. it's like you got like i heard courses i never heard before it's like, crazy then, eh? i'm like it's flexible yeah There's a lot of flexibility on that's a lot in here like, it's crazy it's up to you like it's just up to you what you want and then not, no one's gonna tell you because first of all you're the one gonna pay for it yeah you have the opportunity Ours is like some of our, some of my friends. You're not gonna go in college if you're not gonna take nursing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's why you see a lot of nurses. That <laughs> they would don't be the. Nursing. So, so when was that? That the NCLEX thing. When when was that? Uh, before we went to New York. <laughs> yeah, oh, Maryland, see. Though. Yeah, yeah. That was July 27. NCLEX so is no joke, though, one, man. NCLEX is yeah, know, fucking man. hard. I'm sorry, my friends, <laughs> right now, but I know a lot of people, and it's not excuse, but. This is like different level exams, and uh, uh, I would say it's it's the mother load of nursing, like you know it's it's it's, it's like the 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 wall towards mm -hmm. a better future. I'm not saying other professions are like that one, but like it's like for our like getting your art and license. Oh, yeah. that's the wall that you need to overcome. I see. And then and it's difficult for a reason. Because you're gonna get all like the best opportunities as right. long as you're smart, and then smart in decision making ones. You're not gonna like right now. Everyone should be learning how to work smart rather than to be working hey, hard. Yes, yes, yeah. and you know, sure, and you know what hey. they said, <laughs> sir. Um, it only becomes failure if you did not act on it. If you fail yeah. today, then you can just move on and learn lesson in it. Then it's not a failure i would say half failure but you learn from it you know you learn from it and and it's not failure totally a failure agreement. definitely now now you are in canada what's one thing your venture moving there that you did not expect uh first of all i did not expect to be uh going on odd jobs as you can see in right. pictures i was a mascot right i was uh I clean cars. I would never do that in the Philippines. Right, right. I, I was like kind of like a brand ambassador for Subway. Uh -huh. Like I was just there standing for like twenty dollars an hour, and then just tell people you want to win something, and then like slay a, a wheel, and then they do push-ups and whatsoever. You give them right. a prize. But like coming to Canada is a, you tend to be trying out a lot of stuff. A lot of different which, things which you would never be doing in your home in the Philippines. Like right. For my case, in the Philippines, I would never clean cars just to get paid. I would never work in a restaurant where I don't, it's not even my passion. Yeah. And then I, I never knew how to cook. I know how to cook eggs. That's it. I told him I, when I applied, I'm like, I only know how to cook eggs, but like I'm willing to learn. Mm. And then, and then every time I'm starting a new job, I am gauging myself. Like I tell myself, okay, three months, mm -hmm. five months, I'm going to take this. Like same when I started my nursing, mm -hmm. I basically was my first job was being a nurse in a, in a, in pediatrics. And it was a government hospital. I had 60 patients, 60 to 70 men. Like Oops, I never, oh my God. I never, like I was thrown directly to the wolves. And then I'm like, and then that was like, from a different city coming from another city, which oh, yeah. they have their own different rules and everything. And I'm like, I just, I was just honest, like telling my workmates, Oh, I'm new. I need some help. Can you help me out? Like, uh, having a good attitude and being honest will make you grow. They woke you, you up, know, huh? Yo, like, you know, your limitations and then you're dealing with lives. You're right. not gonna gamble something like in nursing wise. If you don't know anything, it's not shameful not to say like, "Oh, I don't know. Can you help me out?" Right. But it's the way how you say it. 
some people are smart, but they're hard to teach. Yeah. But for my case, I accepted my limitation. Right, right. I told myself, like, I don't know this one, but whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Because mm. it's for me to learn. Like, they would show me once, I would say, okay, can I do it? Because I learn by doing. Right, Same right. And, uh, when I was grilling chicken, man, like I never knew how to grill chicken. I was working in Nando's. This I guy doesn't know how to grill chicken. So it just shows a difference <laughs> no. between, you know, we we came in the same country, but he doesn't know how to grill chicken. Uh, yeah, right. Go ahead, bro. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed, man. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I always remember that day, like this, like Nando's, it's a, it's a Portuguese restaurant. Perry, right? Perry. Per per man, yeah, and yeah. there's a lot of stuff like people are coming in, ordering like they yeah. want like a like a whole chicken cut yeah. into eight, no skin and whatsoever. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> That's all good, bro. Like, yeah, and then you need to put grill marks. Where I'm like, I am not really good with art or whatever, but like I am, like my my. My marriage to tell me like, oh, it should be like this because you need to sell like a brand. You have a certain look, like how yeah, the chicken yeah, yeah, is. Yeah. So I saw this 16-year-old kid grilling better than me. I'm like, I'm, I told myself, I felt like I'm like 25, 26 at the time. I'm like, this kid's beating me. And yeah. I challenged myself like, okay, three weeks. Told me three weeks. He's the one going to ask for me, <laughs> ask for help. How long is the, the shift there? Like, like six to seven hours. Six, six to days. seven hours. Is that seven days yeah. a week? Uh, I was a student, so it's basically twenty hours a week. So it's like more like four, three to four. Yeah, times that's a hard a job, week. man. And then, uh, yeah. I was going to school nine to three, and then after school, I'm like four to twelve midnight, closing time, mopping and. I remember those days, bro. You know what? So, uh, like, I it was fun, but. I'm like, I'm thankful. Like, yeah, definitely, that, that bro. Nando's family, man, like, they helped me a lot. My transition to Canada, like, I still see them as family. Like, that's um, what's up. He, they helped me out. Like, there were my parents, like, even my manager. She was Filipina. Oh, that's like, I never up. knew she was Filipina. And, like, she was rough at me first, with telling me, like, looking at me at first, like, oh, there's no, wi there's no maids over here, okay? And then I'm, like, telling her, I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm, not, right. I'm not good at sweeping, but I'm, I'm gonna do my job. And then she saw my dedication, and, yeah. and I referred people too, like those classmates. How long did you work there? I took almost two years, man. Like, oh, honestly, dang, like school, yeah, you went deep, yeah, but it, yeah, I know it, but. Yeah, well, I'm still blessed because I, yeah. at the same time, like, only three three weeks coming to Canada, I find a job. Like, a week, I need to settle down or everything, but, like, and it was just by accident. I was just looking for a place to live, and then the person living in the house was asking me, do you have a job? I said, no. And I said, come with me. And the next day, I'm starting. And then during that time, I only know how to grill. And then there's a lot of grillers. So for me to have more shifts, I need to learn other aspects of the right. workplace. Like you got like the, you need to do the prep ones, you do everything. So basically in that time frame, they trained me to be doing everything to the point. Like sometimes we're short work, like we're working short mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm like putting, prepping chicken, breaking chicken and whatsoever, and then cooking it at the same That's time. That's wild, bro. And bro, like. Yo, that chicken story it, it of you. Fun. Yo, I before <laughs> do you know Victoria Plaza, right? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. That's where knows that's me. where my <laughs> first job is. Kentucky Fried Chicken in the Philippines. I bro, cooked there. I never knew you worked over I there. I cooked there, bro. When it was open, it was crazy because my cousin and me worked there. Um, he passed away. Uh, it's like our brothers to us. But man, we cooked there. I mean, cooking chicken in Kentucky Fried Chicken is a blessing and a curse. It's different. But you're, you're able to eat, but man, it's wild because there's a lot of people wants to eat KFC in the Philippines. And it's For just sure, that, yeah, yeah it's, it's so busy. And and that being said, though, do you have any regrets going to Canada so far? No, honestly, like, no regrets. No regrets? Like, every, um, every single thing that happened, delays and hardship. Right. Like, Canada, coming to Canada, coming, going out of 
our own country sad to right, say right. it's a blessing because as i told you i was a nurse back in the philippines i could not even buy shoes yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Think, like if i'm gonna buy something that i want i need to think three or four times if i really need it yeah here is like if i need something right away i can do it because i'm blessed with work like you got like as long as you have a job you have the opportunity you can do things you're more you have a leverage of helping out your family too right, like, right. Uh, same like nah my brother just came so if i was in the philippines i would not be able to help out right. instead they're the ones helping me out right right definitely <laughs> man like, yeah here is a uh you have the opportunity to help other people like uh bills wise uh giving giving like you still have family back home was this so was this like did you always want to be a nurse ever since in the philippines no, no. <laughs> to be honest like i was kind of like in the genre of like getting forced into nursing but my mom really not forced me right but, the only thing that got me into nursing like is our school was like well known for cute women okay so let's go i'm like yeah. oh, okay nursing I'm, i'm just gonna fail this nursing i'm gonna move because it was san pedro college and yeah. usually i'm from ateneo and then usually people from ateneo high school they go to ateneo college definitely and then, but during our time san pedro was really the best for nursing oh yeah and i never heard about san pedro and then uh they say oh there's a lot of cute women over there girls and everything and then you're taking up nursing i'm like okay that's like giving me the drive but like we were all young right <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> man that's some, part of the you gig need something to you need something to get motivate to school. yeah motivation number yeah, one motivation right there but i think oh. until this day though i think spc is still the best nursing in the city uh, still the best yeah uh hands down they're really good what what would you advise yeah. to your fellow um spc people especially at your age you know about your um, people that's going to graduate kids are going to graduate what's one advice you can tell them that you know a lot of people want to get out of the country you know it's a third world country let's face it philippines is a third world country but since president duterte, duterte uh, uh stepped in there's a lot of improvements like leaps and bounds but still by the end of the day people are wanting more for the best of their you know family what advice are you gonna are you gonna pitch in for like kids fourth year college students that's trying to you know embed their life as a nurse my advice is like uh they keep aiming for the best like they don't they don't limit themselves they saying like oh i'm just a nurse right they right you would see nursing as a biggest opportunity you have you see the benefits of being a nurse towards your family being being motivated like uh being compassionate to to your patient because a lot of not sad to say a lot of nurses are uh it's it's really hard especially with the pandemic yeah. like in, instead you being empathetic to your patient yeah. you need to keep it Because like, imagine every patient you have. I know it's dif- difficult, but like, mm-hmm. imagine them as part of your family. What if that's your grandma, that's your sibling over there who needs help, and then you need to be more patient. That's why nursing is really difficult. Because yeah. like, there's a lot of factors every single day. You got a lot of people going into your head, wanting you to do stuff and everything, but like. You're limited. They, you can't do everything. Uh, that's why flexibility comes in too. Mm. You need to be understand. Like you need to be adapting towards. So okay, I'm gonna do this because this person needs more care and other person. Because sad to say, like we're we're all short staff, right? Yeah. Now too. How- But like the best advice is just keep pushing through, keep moving forward, and then never give up. Nursing how how, how would you see? those kids um you know invested four years college in nursing and by the end of the day not using those you know what they have went to school and fell off and you know lost hope basically uh i can say it's like uh they should really find 
if they want nursing. Like yeah. nursing is not for everyone, man. Uh, if you think like it's not gonna be good for you, and then you're just pleasing other people, yeah. it's not. It's not for you. Like uh, you need to look for whatever you want because we have one life, and then you're not gonna be going through all this process and then blaming your family, telling me like I never wanted nursing. Right. Yeah, But you I know what though, bro? It. One way or another, I have seen a lot of doctors in the Philippines and a lot of friends of mine, doctors in the Philippines, just a ticket to get into the country. They downgrade it. it they don't look at it as downgrade. They just want to get in. But these people are MDs. Bro, 10 years, extra 10 years of yeah. education. Yeah. You're going back to the 40s. Exactly. Six years. Like, it's, for my case, it's like, it's hard to accept yeah. because like that's six years or, or seven depends on your process. But like, that's the thing. It's, it's not, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. And that's just show that you already invested four years that you in went, acceptance, man. Yeah. You're, 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 you know, you're a doctor and then you're, there's another doctor yeah. coming in telling you what to do and you know, your own practice. Right. It's not easy. <laughs> and and like, guess what though? They 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 feel happy because they got contentment. Their families are eating anytime they want, bro, and you know. Bro, not to disregard anything, but like I'm an RPN, mm -hmm. so I'm lower than a nurse, and I see this nursing nurses over here, and then I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not. They're telling me one thing to do, which I myself know. Right, right. This is the best management. Definitely. Like, I'm like, okay, but chain of command, yeah, I'm yeah. going to follow you. Yeah. But like, if they ask me for an explanation, I give them a good one. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, the same boat. Oh. I'm, I'm, my wife was the same thing. And now, uh, she's like a, a thorn because she be like, uh, uh you're going to tell me differently. And this is my job description. And I know what to, how to do it right. She's going to do it on her own. It's crazy, man. So far, so far in our conversation, I'm detecting so much growth in your, in your path. Now, <laughs> so, so far, how would you define this adulthood in Michael? Uh, my adulthood right now is a, it's leaning towards, uh, a lot of self growth, man. A lot, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, uh, I'm just telling you right now, like, <laughs> the the key to my self growth mm. towards jumping through an adult from being a bachelor was my kid, man. Yeah, kid. Like changes uh, everything. When 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 he when my ex got pregnant, and right. I told myself, this is like I tell everybody. That time, I told myself like, oh, you need to get your act straight. You need right. like, you're dealing with your family to the point I took off my earring. I'm right. like, I, that's not a big deal, man. But like, I want to look more yeah, like yeah, a dad. Yeah. Right, right. But like, I'm still working out. But like, I'm like, okay. Were you, were you prepared be... to, to like, when you say ex, no, were you man. prepared to go married or something like that? No, marriage was, uh, I, we were engaged, but like, uh, I, like, it was really too early. Yeah. And then we we're like, it was just a month of dating. So we were basically, we were not that prepared. For right. Our society as Filipinos. Yeah. Like if we got someone pregnant. Definitely. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like an obligation. Yes. To, to get married. But like, good thing for my case, I never, I told myself like, I'm not going to be jumping into that one. Because I know myself, like right. I need to get to know the person first. And then you need to develop a good uh, foundation. So that was like when a long distance one, it was like a challenge. I saw it as a challenge. Like if we survive this one, this how long was that? A good family. That was like three. How long was uh, before that one? The long distance. Oh, how long did it last? Two years, like two years, I think. Man. It doesn't like, work yeah. out, bro. Yeah. yeah. I know. I mean, it's I hard. It was hard. It was hard. Like uh, I, I was not perfect. She was not perfect, so we we had our problems. But during that, is, let's like, let's <laughs> drop this. Let's drop the ball right now. During that two years, did you did you did you remain? You know, stick to one. Yes, bro. Like yeah. I, I was. I never had like yeah. a good history before, but like I am honest. Like 
I have a kid. I accepted the fact, like we are dads. Right, right, you know, right. You know the feeling, like you're not gonna waste your family. Yeah. You're not gonna do something that's like a lot of temptation. Especially I was in oh, Canada. Yeah. There's a lot of workmates. I got like a lot of temptations every single day. I could yeah. have done something, but I said no. I'm open. Like first day, I'm telling, right, oh, right. I'm a dad. I was open, like I was selling my my word. I'm a dad. I have a kid. I show them the picture of my kid. I see. Because I was open, like telling them, okay, like this guy is a dad and everything. I'm so proud of my boy. Like uh, he is. Even when I was in the Philippines, I would show, like I was in a jeepney man. Like I would show, like right, the passenger, right. like this is my kid. You're proud of like, your kid. Was, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm like proud. Like this is a really good looking kid. I'm like, I'm now, blessed. now that being said, though, um, it's a figure that uh um whenever we have this type of pain that we we go through example for me i was i was raised as we are raised me and my four brothers as uh we don't have a dad uh, we were raised by a single mother how how do you cope up you know on on things like this with with um communication are you okay with the mom yeah, we're currently right now we're co-parenting. So mm. basically we're we're talking and then we we're in the same page. We're focusing on our kids. Okay. We don't mind like other aspects are if she wants to talk regarding nursing, I'm I'm down for that one. But like aside from that one, we're just cool cuz sometimes we argue. And then if we argue, that's going to be an effect to our kids. Right, if right. You possibly won't be communicating. And then it's going to be even harder for me because I, I can't like, I'm going to like, for me, I'm, I get this off. Yeah. So for me to cool down, I tend to be distancing, but like, I still need to talk to my kid because every day I miss him. And then like, man, no, when I went to Chicago and just see him first time, like after years and then leaving, it, it was the hardest part. I, I never wanna, cried. I don't want to feel like, that dude. This this is this is it. Our Uber driver cried too when I left. I when we left, like uh, I could not. My tears would not stop dripping because uh, even like my kid has autism, right, so right, he right. does not really understand. Man. Like so, and then the Uber driver was just looking at me and my sister, and then I'm like, my tears would not stop from flowing, and then. Uh, it was it was like different kind of like I was so sad, and then to the point I saw his diaper in my bag. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. I keep my di his diaper is there. I'm like looking at it <laughs> because I'm like, it's a tough situation, man. I remember when I my mother yeah. goes to Saudi Arabia. Every time she leaves, it's different. Me and my brother not having a dad. We were raised by our grandma, and every time she leaves, it's like a dagger, dude. It's different feeling. But other than that, though, man, stepping out of that type uh, 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 side, if a friend is a living treasure, how would you keep it? Uh, keeping a friend is really important for me. Like, uh, I cherish my friend ever since I was a kid. Like, yeah. I did not have a lot of friends, but like, I would go the distance, right. like uh, being trustworthy, right. uh, making sure like they're okay. Like uh, one example is Earl. Yeah. Like you, you knew Earl, like how yeah, yeah. how close we were. We we were not talking as much, but when we're together, like everything is clicked. Just like we never, yeah, we never left or something, because like. I cherish him so much. I and especially if I knew something, something's on the go, I would check up on them. Yeah. Especially nowadays, like we're getting older, our like a lot of our fa friends having families, yeah. and then just small checkups. Like you ask them how you were. Exactly, dude. It it's so important these days. And, then, and planning out, man. Like you keep your, like, uh, you keep your like. It's not like. You communicate every single time, but yeah. like, uh, if you like, you have close friends, mm -hmm. you know, like even if you don't communicate, like you know, they got your back, which you feel it deep in your soul. Like this person, whatever happened, he's always got my back. Like uh, that's why, like, 
treasuring like those kind of stuff makes you treasure them so much and that you don't want them like you don't want to lose them definitely bro because it's not it's not every day you're gonna find someone that's gonna be clicking you have the same same things that you love right definitely man. family is family but sometimes friends can be family too definitely amen to that amen to that brother now now one thing for sure that i want to break the question is is how do you make up from betrayal uh you take it as a learning experience because uh in life not not everyone will have a like a perfect pathway yeah betrayal is one of those hindrances every single time so it's how you see it basically if the person betrays you he was not deserving of your friendship yeah and then it's a blessing on your part because you are no longer wasting energy right towards keeping that friendship you know like i i'm like i'm the type of person like i would do anything for you as long as i'm capable but like if it's out of like context and then if you choose to like uh break the bridge or whatsoever i'm like i'm not gonna even try because basically you don't see me the same way yeah so for mine it's like it's a blessing like okay this person is not gonna be part of your life yeah. but it was uh so basically they have their own purpose. if you can't trust so a my, person and you burn that bridge there is no making up for that bridge you can't build that back right Yeah, no, even like it's the same thing if you drop a, a glass, right? Right, right, right? Even if you try to pick it up, it's like trust. Yeah. It won't be the same. You, it can still be the same thing, but like the cracks are still there. Yeah, yeah. So it's Definitely. hard. It's, it's not easy, but like everyone deserves an opportunity. But for my own peace of mind, like I would forgive a person, but they're not going to be my friend. Right, right. <laughs> Definitely, man. Definitely. That would be a. Uh, That would be ridiculous, right? And by the end of the day, for in your own, you know, benefit, you you would have to move on. You can't cling to a person that you can't even trust. And then all of a sudden, you know, it comes into betrayal. We put that into context. Then you would have to move on and, and you know, move on with life, right? Yeah. Not everyone is able to move on to that one. You have one life. And then yeah. there's no point of you wasting it, yeah. stressing or trying to fix something that's broken. I'm into that, bro. I'm in. Bro, I'm in to that. Need to move on. Yeah, like what I said, yeah. ladies. Um, Michael's still a uh, single, but other than that, Michael, is there any question that you wish I'd ask, and how would you answer it? Hmm. Uh. Be honest, I don't. <laughs> I don't yeah, have any that's like, good, I'm man. Like, I'll, I'm like, for me, this is a good, good like uh, experience because it's my first time doing a podcast, and then yeah, it's, it was it's, like same. It was like same as like we were drinking. Yeah, and definitely, we had, like, definitely, view, bro. bro. Like, that was a good view. That, that was like I'm like we were like oh shit, this is yeah. like good, good, and then the beer and everything. That was good like, stuff, man. Spot. I mean, one of these yeah. days, you know, we're gonna be looking at back at it, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one, right? Yeah. Now, now, fun. brother, man. I mean, phew, it's yeah. been an hour. I know you're going to the gym, bro, but I took a lot of time, man. I truly appreciate it. But all Mike, good, good. before I let you go, man, here and talk active, I had I have a signature question here. In your own method. How would you share your practice of wisdom, courage, justice, and moderation? Uh, you can do, put one sentence in there. Basically, it's a stoicism. Um, this is how stoicism does, and it's a, basically a rundown definition of it. How would you share your practice of you know, wisdom, justice, courage, and moderation in your own Michael way? Uh In my own way, is like uh, I would promote more awareness of that one to other people. Yeah, uh, having the courage, going out of your comfort zone, learning new stuff. Uh, it would develop a lot of character. Yeah, it would show a lot of growth, which we all need in our life. We just need to keep on growing to be a better, better version of ourselves. Definitely, so bro. That's. Yes. that's uh as much like i appreciate like how you are 
trying to reach out to other people too. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people, like same as the person we were talking about. Right, right, right. Really needs to hear some good stuff and then maybe save some lives. Right, right. Because if they, yeah, so. Definitely. That's, uh, that's why when we sat down on that lake and I was like listening to your story, my main goal of the the channel talk active is to yeah. contribute and to be able to share you know these are your life this is your life story and i'm just you know a sponge and and at the same time i'm listening to your authenticity and i'm growing at the same time and we're spreading in our own little ways we contribute to the universe with this podcast but basically we're just missing the lake bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah man I like a beer yeah, I know right I got my black coffee sure, you're going sure. to the gym yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, other yeah, than yeah. that Mike I truly appreciate the time bro it's always a pleasure you know thank you so much yeah. bro it was fun it was really fun yeah. definitely brother I truly appreciate you man and other than that Mike you're gonna have to uh, go and get your muscle pumped up once again ladies yeah for sure Canada, <laughs> Michael, you know, you can send me an IM text. Michael is in Talk Active Group. Check him out. You know, he's there. Mike, thank you so much, bro. Thank you so much, bro. Like, you take care. Definitely, you brother. Too, brother? Yeah. But other than that, guys, I thank Michael for his time. And we are going to our outro now. It's been more than past the cap. I would say the most, this is the longest Talk Active. It's a good talk. But other than that... The vulnerability of dependence. We admit it or not, we are all addicted in one way or another. It can be a conscious decision or a natural reflex that we do that has been practiced for a long time. It becomes natural to us, such as dependencies on routines, could be an object such as coffee, cell phones, donuts. It could be anything to some people. It could be another person's approval. These dependencies mean we're not in control of our own lives. Dependency is. How do we remedy this? I'll talk to my own experience. I built a personal switch. The switch is only for me. I turn it on if I want to. I can turn it off anytime I want to. It doesn't control me. I control the switch. It's easier said than done, but the quicker you figure it out, the better for you. This is why we must strengthen ourselves by testing these dependencies before they become too great. Test out the water. Can you put yourself on a diet on a month? Can you resist picking up that phone while in the dinner table? Have you taken a cold shower? Make yourself vulnerable to dependency. If not one day, vulnerability might bring you to your knees. Thank you for listening, guys. This is your main boy. Always remember, God is good all the time. Peace out.